Pastor Tom has been preaching a message about fear, fatigue, and fatalism. And this really keys into the fatalistic mentality that a lot of people have said, oh, well, we've got a Democrat president now. What can we do? I guess we just have to hold on and just try to buckle down. No. Are we going to just sit, sit back for two years or four years or God, ha God knows what? Are we just going to sit back and not contend? What do we believe God has said? We've got to rise to the battle. We've got to continue to fight the battle. And God is saying, go into that ring and start taking out the devourer. Start taking out the destroyer and don't give him any peace. We've got to contend. Listen, part of the word for this year came out of Pastor Greg's intercession time when he said we've got to dance the dance of the Maha Naim. If you haven't listened to that message, you would have no, no clue what I'm talking about. But it's a dance uh, between the angels that are in heaven, the armies that are in heaven, and the army that's in earth. And there's a dance that we've got to learn to do together. I was thinking this morning when, when we were in prayer and Pastor Greg started praying about that again, that 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 dance that unites heaven and earth together. I was thinking, you know what? Boxers learn to dance. If I was in better shape, I would do that. I would get up here and I would dance around and show you how to walk, but I'm not going to do that. But you know what? Remember, remember uh, Muhammad Ali, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee? <laughs> okay. Boxers learn to dance. They learn to move their feet. They learn how to anticipate the move of their opponent. And so I think that we're in a season right now where we got to shake off any place of being disheartened or disillusioned or being discouraged. And we've got to understand God's already prophetically spoken. I'm bringing you into a contending season. The Lord says the battle's not over. There's a contending that we've got to get into and an engagement that we've got to do. Now, we don't fight as those that are in the world. If you'll go to the next slide. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 verse 3 says, For though we live in this world, we don't wage war as the world does. Okay, this is not about flesh and blood. This is not about fighting people. Church, let me just say this. Joe Biden is our president. Like it or not, whether you feel like it's legal or not, whether you feel like whatever, 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 he is now in that position, and we're going to pray for him as we have for every president since we started this church. And we're not going to curse him. <laughs> I think that God's doing some things. But we're not going to curse. We're not going to become the people that curse. Okay? We're not, we're not those people. We are not those people. That's not who we are. So we're not going to fight this spiritual battle by battling flesh and blood. Okay? It says the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Come on, there's a stronghold right now that we're contending with, and it has a stronghold on our nation. But we're going to battle with the weapons of the Spirit, and then God's going to show us how to engage in the ground war. But we got to first win air superiority. We first got to engage in that battle. It says we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. This is where we have to be because let me tell you, if all you're doing is just pumping yourself full of what's out there, you're going to get discouraged, you're going to get disheartened, you're going to lose hope, you're going to lose vision, and you're going to forget what God said. And you're going to lose focus. And so the next slide actually talks about focus. Now, I preached a message years ago on this word focus, F-O-C-U-S. And this is how I preached it. I preached that that word meant faith operating consistently until satisfied. I don't know about you, but I'm not satisfied. Yeah, don't lose your focus. And if you're satisfied, I'm here to stir you up. Somebody once said, God came to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Okay, so some of you are just trying to find a place of comfort uh, and, and trying to figure out your new normal. I'm telling you, the new normal is contending. 
The new normal is battling, and the new normal is staying focused. Why do we talk about that for America? Well, let me just say, we did, we did a conference this last week in Korea. Did you miss us? <laughs> we went to Korea, we Zoomed to Korea, and we preached in Korea, did a whole conference in, in Korea. Do you know what the Korean people are doing? They are warring and contending for their nation. Do you know what the people of India are doing? They're warring and they're contending for their nation. Do you know what the people from Honduras are doing? They're warring and they're contending for their nation. Come on, why? Because God loves nations. But I'll tell you something else that all those nations are contending for. They're contending for America. It's the craziest thing. Santiago Rodriguez, uh, who used to be part of our, our ministry, he actually went on a missions trip to Nepal. And on this missions trip, he went up to this very, very high mountain in Nepal. And while he was there, um, he went into this little chapel, this little church that was way up in the Nepalese mountains. And when he went in there, at the very front of this little chapel in Nepal, there were three flags. And the pastor said, we pray for these nations every time we gather. They were the Nepalese flag, the flag for Israel, and the flag of the United States. In the mountains of Nepal. Why? Because they said, we recognize that as America goes, so goes the world. Do you know that when we pushed legalized abortion, we spread that all over the world. You realize that when we legalized gay marriage, we spread it all over the world. See, that was the wrong, uh, the wrong mission. The mission was that we were anointed to be the evangels to the world, to preach the gospel to the ends of the world. And I believe America still has a destiny to return to that pathway and to return to that calling to begin to be exporters of the gospel, exporters of righteousness, exporters of the kingdom of heaven and kingdom concepts. Not because uh, I personally think America is special and I personally think America has a covenant, but I also want to say that God is looking for people that will contend for the destiny of their nation. America shall be saved. We're going to stay focused. Here's, here's the things we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on America shall be saved. Okay, listen. January the 4th, I heard the Lord say, we were in a, just a small gathering of some of our watchmen here locally. And I just heard the Lord say, I'm up to something. And I knew when he said, I'm up to something, I knew the Lord was saying, nobody really understands what I'm doing right now, but I'm up to something. You, you're going to need to tell the people, they need to put their trust in me. Not in the system, not in a man, <laughs> not in what you think you know, not in what you think should happen, the Lord's saying, I'm up to something. How many can just believe right now that God's up to something beyond what we know? Okay? That was January 4th. Then crazy stuff happened on January 6th. Let me just say something. God's word does not expire on November 3rd or January 6th or January 20th. God's word didn't expire. God decreed America shall be saved. And there's been a church, an ecclesia that has been contending to see that happen. Now, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people, people that, um, that have one view of America, Christians, believers. Um, and the wonderful thing about America is that everybody has the right to believe what they want to believe, right? We may not too much longer have the right to say whatever we want to say. But how many know that we have the right to believe what we want to believe? And so there's two different thoughts in the church. There are people that loved Donald Trump. There's people that hated Donald Trump. Christians that hated. And I, I kind of get his rhetoric, his, his mouth, some of that stuff. I get that. But see, I think the reason that the church appreciated him was because they felt like they found a transformation partner in Donald Trump. Because why? Because he stood up for things that were important to us. He stood up for life, the life of the unborn. He stood up for religious liberty. 
He stood up for a, a biblical understanding of, of human sexuality. Um, a lot of these things that we think is eroding the moral fiber of the nation. You know, I mean, he, he did a lot of other stuff too. So, so what we have in the new administration that makes us need to pray harder is the fact that they don't stand for any of that. They stand for abortions up to the time of birth and then letting a baby die on the table afterwards. President Biden is actually populating his cabinet with transvestites, homosexuals, bringing in every kind of a perverse expression. Uh, he just signed an executive order that basically said that removed all distinctions from uh, gender. In other words, taking down any kind of a barrier to say a man's allowed in a woman's locker room, a man's allowed in a woman's bathroom, you know, blah, blah, blah. Y'all know what I'm saying, okay? So what am I saying? Does that mean we don't pray for our president? No, it means we pray harder, okay? It means that we've got a different level of battle that we've got to contend with right now, and we can't disengage because we feel like it didn't do any good. It did do good. I'm telling you, there's never a prayer that's prayed that's not effective and that's not efficient. I'm telling you that the Rome, uh, Revelations 5, 8 says that there's bowls in heaven which are filled with incense, and you know what that incense is? It is the prayers of the saints, and when the bowls in heaven get filled, God begins to tip those bowls out and begins to bring change into the earth. So I'm telling you, we're doubling down in this house on praying for this nation. We're doubling down on praying for transformation, for revival, for awakening. We're doubling down and we're decreeing America shall be saved. We're not going to doubt in the dark what God said in the light. Come on, we've got an assignment. We've got a mission. We've got to believe the prophets and God said we would prosper. We're not going to disengage from the battle because it doesn't make sense.